sorry about that. I accident. I think I accidentally hit the end stream button. I don't know how I did that, but I was trying to post this link and it said, boom, that video. Anyway, everybody's like, where did Tom go? <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm going to wait for people to get back. Oh my gosh. I don't know what happened, but we're back on. Oh, I should probably work on this while well, everybody's showing up. Say hi when you log get back on. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't think I hit the end stream button. It's way at the top. I was actually at the moment at copy and pasting that that link. Let me speaking of link, let me well <laughs> hope I've oh I also was trying to pin that Discord link. That that's when it probably went sideways, actually. So here's the Discord link. Somebody asked for it. Um, and I'm going to pin it. Don't crash. All right. It worked. All right. So I don't know what happened, but I'm going to work on this right now. This, this, uh, capoing thing. All right. Uh, capo position. Uh, so fifth fret and then shapes would be G. That would be the alternate. Okay. Obviously in the key of G, we're just going to play open, um, using G shapes. However, you could also capo at the fifth fret and use D shapes. Okay. So again, G was G, E minor, C, D. So that would be. Now the E minor. The E minor um, shape is the B minor so it's a bar chord so it's a little bit of a drag but that's um but that's not bad so you go fifth 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 fret oops and then you go D shapes okay then open um then we're back to D key of D obviously we'd probably most likely play an open position but you could also, if you wanted to play the key of D, you could also go to the seventh fret and use G shapes. And that's not bad. I mean, that's. I mean, that's basically what George Harrison did on Here Comes the Sun was he capoed at the seventh fret and he used D shapes. I'm sorry. Uh. He used G shapes. Wait, no. No, he, I'm sorry. He's play, He's actually, this is the key of A. So we're going to get to that next. Okay. So, uh, but actually the key of A, I wouldn't normally play there. Um, okay, seventh fret. Um, and using uh, G shapes for the key of D. All right. So the key of A, probably be most likely open would be the most common way to play the key of A, in the key of A, so we'd be using A shapes, that makes sense. Okay, and then um, I, sometimes I will play, because sometimes you just want to have that G sound, you want to be able to do G licks. I have to go check the other video out to see. Um, you, some of you said you watched the, the, the uh, if you have any comments, put them on uh, the Discord, and I'll, I'll read them there about the, the the mandolin. I'll probably post that video. Um, so in the key of A, though, I might capo at the second fret. You know, you have all those open strings you can pull off. So that might, you know, I might go to the second fret. Um, oops. What am I typing? Two, second. And that would be G shapes. And then I might actually go to the seventh fret and do, uh, what was I saying? D shapes, yeah, for the cubate. I might do that. 
okay? Key of E, um, I would play open using E shapes. And um, But I, again, I would probably capo at the second fret if I was gonna do something about it, make it more pretty using D shapes, okay? I could also capo at the ninth fret using, I, I just don't think that's gonna happen. Um, the key of B, very common. Yeah, uh, James, I think James really liked the third fret too, doesn't he? Um, but the key of B, you can capo here, most common thing. Um, I would use um, a fourth fret and use G shapes. Um, you could go up to the ninth fret and use D shapes. So I'm just going to show you where they both are, but you're going to want to gravitate to the one that's low. So this is a good example. Okay. So I could, if I, if the song's in B and let's say it's again, that one, only one of those chords is open, right? Ow, ow. That B is such an awful chord. I'm just playing it pure as a good. Okay, that's not fun. Okay, but there is one open chord, but that's again part of the problem. Again, that one open chord sounds so good compared to the other three chords. So it's like just not the best way to do it. So if I capo at the fourth fret, it sounds pretty good. It's not too high. It's high, it's up there, but I'm just using G shape, E shape, C shape, D shape, okay? And then if I, if I want to use D shapes, I could go up here, you know, and I could play. Really hard to get. I might use a cheater six chord, but that's another option. I'm, again, this is all going to be on the diagram that I'm gonna I'm gonna post here in a second. Okay, when I'm all done with it. All right, let's go to key of F sharp. Now F sharp. I'm gonna give you alternates on this. Okay, F sharp. I would probably also capo at the fourth fret but I would use D shapes, okay? So that's probably the most likely thing. Um, I'm not gonna capo at the 11th fret and use it. So I might capo at the second fret and use E shapes, okay? And these are I, these are not hard and fast rules. So I, it's a toss up to me on F sharp if I would capo, because you know I feel like F sharp wants to be a big, key, kind of a big key, right? And so if you capo with the fourth fret and use D shapes, it's like, oh, little wee, little wee, little ukulele sound. So if I just capo here and I use the key of E, okay, sure, I have a C sharp minor and a B, but I can use cheater chords for those. And I feel like that's a lot truer to the sound of an F sharp of probably what's desired, depending on, of course, the song. Um, but yeah, so so that that's one of the one of the weird you know ones that kind of is different. Okay, the key of F always I'm always grabbing for the capo, and it's third fret, and my favorite place to play that, and I'm using D shapes. Okay, so the the one six four five in the key of F one six four five. I'm sorry if I'm going too fast. I'm just trying to get through this diagram so that I can, so you guys can have it. <laughs> then we can talk more about it on detail. Hey, Kathy Short Web! You, you caught the second iteration of this video. I, I started it and then accidentally I think I hit the end stream button. I don't know why, or I hit, I don't know what I did. Hey, you're back. Uh, sorry, I'm so sorry that I hit that button. I think I hit a button. I don't know. It's, it's not where I, I, it, I don't remember mousing up there, but maybe I did. No, have dinner. No, please. Don't apologize. You're eating a very early or late, very late dinner. Okay, so the key of F, I might, I would probably capo a third fret using D shapes. Would I capo up at the tenth fret using D shapes? No, but I might capo at the first fret using E shapes. Okay. 
So that would be my second option. Okay, um, key of B flat, same thing. I'm probably gonna keep with the third fret. And this time I'm gonna use G shapes. So in other words, if I capo with the third fret and the songs in the key of B flat, I can I can play all the main chords just using the G shapes. Here's the one chord, here's the sixth chord. We talked about the one the numbering system last week. The 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 four chord and the five chord. And I should do more on that. I may do a video on that. And, and the other way you could do it is you could go to the first fret because I don't think I'd go up here to the to the eighth fret, uh, but and play A shapes. A is such a great key. So that would be my probably my second option would be to go to the first fret and use A shapes. And so if you go to the first fret and play like you're in the key of A, it'll be B flat. E flat's going to be at the first fret. That's going to be a no-brainer. Basically, it's just one fret up from the key of G. So you're going to go up a fret and play D uh, D shapes. Um, but and I might go to the sixth fret and play. Uh, wait. Oh no, that would be eighth. Let's see, that would be the eighth fret and play. I don't think I. So I might go to the third fret and play C shapes. You do have a F bar chord, but um, all right, and I think I'm gonna. Yeah. I, okay. So I'm gonna. I can make these columns a little smaller. Sorry. All right, now, uh, just two more keys, okay? The key of A flat, no brainer. Just gonna, you're just gonna capo at the first fret and use G shapes, okay? Key of A flat, uh, G shapes. All right, another spot for capoing in A flat, maybe the fourth fret using E shapes. And you might have to, like, you might have to, and that's where, you know, breaking songs down, if you go, if you take a song and you and next to the chords, you just write the numbers and you can do the numbering thing, which is cool. Like I said, I should probably do, we should talk more about that. Um, but if, if you can break things down in numbers, then you can go, oh, okay, this is the one chord, the six, because I'm in the key of, you know, whatever. You can find them a little faster, I think. So I, one way to play A flat would be, I would still probably, 99% of the time, I would probably just go first fret. Right, Gary? You would probably do the same, right? You, if you have a song in an A flat, you would probably just keep with first fret. Okay, last one. This is the last one, and I'm, then I'm going to create a PDF, and I'm going to drag it to the Discord. And I can even do a screenshot, and we can put it here and talk about it, I think. Put it over my face and everything. Okay, uh, so D flat, same thing. First fret, uh, I'm probably going to actually... D flat, I'm probably going to play, opt for um, the key of C. So um, I'm going to capo the first fret, play C. But I could also do, uh, D would not work. Um, I could also do sixth fret and G. All right. So let me, I can get rid of all these. All right, save. This will be up. Wait, that's not what I want. All 
So I'm calling it, where's my capo? And I'm going to save it to my desktop. And, uh, okay, all right, so um, now I'm going to do a screen grab. And this is what, oh no, okay, we, we saved, okay, let me, no. Uh, let me just check and see if it showed up on my desktop. No, what? No, I messed up. Okay. Boy, you are just watching me do office work. <laughs> this is like the worst video ever. Oh, gosh. If I know what I was going to do, you know, again, I overslept, so I didn't really know what I was going to teach. Okay, so... Here we go. All right, so this is what I was just working on. We were working on it together. Okay, I'm gonna drag this out. Come on, there we go. Oh, look, it goes over everything. All right. And then I'm going to the Discord right now. And I'm gonna drag a PDF of this um, into Discord. And it'll be under the category um, Let's see, where's, there we go. Oh, it, Aslan, these are great videos, I love these things, okay. All right, so, okay, I've gotta read. <laughs> I'm back. Yeah, sorry guys, it's funny. Okay, so it's gonna be in the Tom's lessons and PDFs, okay. And then I think I say, yeah, where's my capo? Oh, go away. Dang it. Oh. All right. You got to get rid of all those. Okay. Yep. So I just, I just dragged that to, to the Discord, this to the Discord. Okay. So again, you can see here, if you look at the, the way I organize it is the most, um, probably the, the best the best keys okay so starting with C um, generally you're gonna play an open position see if, you, if the songs in C yeah you know you're gonna play open chords you know you're gonna play in C C my a minor all that okay hold on a second I can move this over so you can see my at least kind of see my hand well, here we go <laughs> not if I capo though okay and then but you could also capo at the fifth fret and play G shifts okay um, so basically, capo position one is the, you'll notice of, it's the, generally the lowest number using G or D shapes, okay? The, if we look at F sharp down there and F, the lowest numbers there were the second and third fret, but I would still call that a secondary option. The first option might be to play capo at the, like for F sharp, to capo at the fourth fret and use D shapes. But you could capo at the second fret and use E shapes, okay? It depends on what you're going for. Like I said, if you want a big sound for that F sharp key, you want a big E type sound, then you might want to capo at the second fret and and um, and uh, play using E shapes, if that makes sense. Now the, <laughs> um, uh, and I'm going to shut this so it doesn't make any noise. I don't have my sound up though, so it should be it should be good. Um, all right. So, um, the, uh, let's see, the, the F, again, you could capo, you, I, I would generally capo at the third fret and do D shapes, but you could capo at the first fret and play E shapes. So you can see, so I, I'm, you know, obviously the first five keys probably the preferred position will be open. So it's not technically a capo position, unless you count the nut as a capo. Uh, but then the secondary option would be there. And like I said, for E and D, you know, I for E, a lot of times I'll capo at the first, second fret and play D shapes. For the key of A, a lot of times I'll capo at the second fret and use G shapes. All right. And we're going to, we're going to do this. Yeah, this is, this is a good, this is a good resource. And this is, these are my kind of prior, this is how I prioritize it, Bob. Okay. The, you know, again, generally I'm going to go with the lowest 
capo position I can do that makes it sound the most like an acoustic guitar and less like a mandolin. Um, but what it, what was it? I, oh, I, the alternate one that I did for A, you, you can see there's a third one for it. So A, the best is open. The next best is second fret key, G shapes. And then George Harrison, you, I had to include that seventh fret for the George Harrison thing. Okay, so, all right. So this chart is up at Discord. Um, I can put it here, maybe. In fact, I'm thinking I'm going to get rid of this text here. It's so ugly. Remove, yes, yes. All right, now I, I know you're not going to be able to really see this very well unless you're watching me on a big screen TV. But yeah, so. <clears throat> um, yeah, so this is. This can be kind of your little lexicon or your Bible, your capo Bible, as far as where should I capo for certain keys? Oh, uh, capo, oh, he, blown in the wind? Oh, did he capo it uh, at the something? Because it was, uh, it was in the key of A, right? How many, Sounds right. It's kind of funny because it feels kind of low in my voice, so to have that high guitar against the low voice. Um, uh, but yeah, you know, I might have done it in, like, I might have, oh, it's in the key of A, okay, I'll play it, you know. I probably would have just played an A, but. But the great thing about, like I said, G, you get that, you can get all that bluegrassy stuff. Um, do all those fun things you can do in the key of G. The, like I said, the key of G and the key of D are, are my fun keys. They're fun keys. Uh, um, the key of, or ha I call them my happy keys. I, what did I call them? You know, I said good. Okay, so my happy keys are D and G. My okay key is, um, you know, uh, uh, or my good keys are A and E, and my hap okay key is C, I think, is what I said originally when I taught that in the clinics and then my where's the key so i guess i had four categories i had four categories of of, of keys that I, that I would break keys down into so let me let me make this uh into a little diagram let's see i'll go to pages to do this so my happy keys are uh, uh, G and D. And then my uh, good keys are, oops, good keys are A and E. My OK keys are, uh, OK key is C. And then the where's my capo keys. Um, are where all the others, you know, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, B, and F sharp. Um, all right, so. See if I got it without the uh, cursor in there. Did I time it? I did. All right. Stop it. Sorry. Here you go. So here's another little. 
little thing here. Right? You know, I, I used to say that A and E were like, hey, thanks for thinking of the guitar player keys. <laughs> right? When somebody would do an arrangement or do write a song or something, they do it in A or E. I'm like, hey, you thought of the guitar player. You know, A and E are bad keys for horn section. So if you're playing in a band with a horn section, you're probably not going to ever play in the key of E. Uh, that's like F sharp for the tenor player and the trumpet player. It's like they don't want to play in C sharp. Was that C? Yeah, that would be C sharp for them. Or, right? No, or is it, what is it? No, F sharp for them. Uh, no, Bruce, let's stop for gas. Oh, are you on the road, right? Did, did, did Bruce block you? <laughs> okay, so we're talking about uh, how, when do you grab your capo? And so if I'm in the, if the song's in the key of G and D, I'm not in the capo, I don't need a capo. If the song's in the key of A and E, I'm probably going to be fine. I don't, I can, but if I want to have like, you know, I basically my goal in capoing bad keys is to either capo it so it's in the key of G for me or the key of D, this capo to the, to the to the um, to one of the happy keys. That's not always the best key. Like we determined, I think that probably for um, for example, for like if songs in D flat, probably just capo at the first point and be playing C. Even though this chart shows you here, um, you could capo um, at the very bottom line. I would probably play in the C, capo first fret. But you could use G shapes if you capo to the sixth fret. But that it's pretty pretty high up the neck, so it's kind of the guitar starts to lose its quality. Um, and then the good keys A and E. Generally, probably ninety nine percent of the time, I'm going to play without a capo. But if it's uh, well, especially if I'm electric, I'm not even going to think about bringing a capo. But on acoustic, no, maybe ten percent of the time in the key of A, I might capo and play a G. E, I don't know. I probably. But if I want to make it pretty, and I'm going to tell you a secret too, when I'm writing for pop art, you know, producers, I do tend to capo up because I think they like like B at the fourth fret or B flat at the third fret. I'll go up there and capo because there's something about having a nice bright guitar to sing along with and write melodies to. I think it really inspires some of the, the writers that I work with. So I tend to do, tend to just capo and then start playing because I'm not, singing or right they're going to write a melody over it so they'll make it work um so if i'm just looking for a vibe yeah i might on acoustic guitar i might just naturally get away from that open string sound if i'm writing um so it's if i'm coming up with something original um there was a bieber song that i did um uh, no it's a got released but I think I came with a third fret because that was pretty prettier sounding hey Sam yeah hopefully you'll see me next week I won't oversleep um, and then uh, ba -da -ba -ba, let's see uh, but if I didn't if I played it open It's not awful, but it's just not as pretty. Um, and I, you know, I even think heavy metal music, all music should be beautiful in its own way. Um, so I just. You 
know, it's just yeah, it was, a, it was just kind of a nice, kind of a nice vibe. And then I think it went. Mm-hmm. Something like that, but yeah, I just I mean it's so, so fun to play in the key of G. So that's oftentimes you'll see if you look at this if if you look at this table. Okay, and I can bring this back down here. If you look at this table, um, look how often the key of D and G show up in that shapes column. Okay, once we start grabbing, for, you know, for the capo, we got G, D, D, G, D, G, and then C at the very bottom. Um, like I said, for F sharp and for F, I might also play an E, but generally this, like, you know, <coughs> the the secondary, uh, the secondary position is going to be higher up the fretboard, if you see that. But in the key, case of uh, F sharp, F, and B flat, um, we were going from the fourth fret, and then the second position, the second capo position is is at the second fret on F sharp, using the E shapes. So yeah, so in, you know, so it's not a hard and fast rule that you're always going to go to the whichever capo position is lowest on the fretboard, lowest on your neck. I'm not always going to do that, but and the this chart is in at Discord, so you can go to Discord right now. Um, and the link is up there, free invite at the top there. I pinned it to the top of the chat. You can go to the Discord thing. Okay, so I'm so sorry. Somebody was, some of you said you were, um, uh, yeah, without the capo, you're right. Uh, uh, Chris, Chris, um, I, I'm going to call you Chris. Uh, it, it's a little bit, yeah, it's a little bit, I don't know, a little more serious, right? So is this, is this a happy love song? It, it's maybe a little like, whoa, this, is this a, a sad love song? <laughs> and up here, it's just a little bit. slept a, a lot but I, I I drove down to San Diego and back yesterday and it took me about three hours to get there and then what I did was I hung out there took some friends to dinner um, in Carlsbad and um, and so that and then just waited you know and then I started heading back when I saw okay it was about an hour and a half to get home because <laughs> really it only I mean as if, if there was no traffic, if I had the freeways to myself, which felt like a little bit last night, I don't think I touched my brakes coming home last night at all. Not once. Um, but I didn't, I didn't leave Carlsbad until midnight. So it means I got home around 1.30 and then my back was hurting. I was having back spasms. So I took Tylenol PM and totally forgot <laughs> that we were that t- today was Monday. Just totally forgot. because tomorrow is a holiday and I'm just thinking, oh, holiday. And I know the stock market's open for a minute today. I don't know. Oh, here's my phone. Um, am I getting? Oh, I'm getting text. Okay, no, that's Bruce. Okay, so and Bruce is checking in. Bruce was there for a second. He's driving to I think to New Hampshire, which I don't blame him. He's I think I think Bruce lives in the Panhandle and Holly's here. Hey, Holly. Um, Yes, Landslide is also capo three. Yep, that's right. And it, it's a different song if you played it in open position. I mean, it might be a better key for some people, and that's fine. But it's so pretty, right, Holly? It's like that's like a, that's a great beginner song to learn. I mean, it's a good beginner finger style song to learn. It's not horribly difficult. Uh, 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 Lindsey Buckingham has, has some really hard acoustic stuff that he's done, but that one's not one of them. So. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, from the foothills to San Diego. Oh yeah, so yeah, the LA. So I took the five all the way down. It was like I'm just gonna stay. I'm just gonna take the five because it was basically two minutes difference between that and the four hundred five. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to risk the four hundred five. So 
I got on the five going down, and he, I, there is literally zero exits at Camp Pendleton. So you're thinking, oh, man, Camp Pendleton's going to be 20 minutes of 80 miles an hour. And about halfway through Camp Pendleton, it just comes to grinding halt. And it's like, because Oceanside, Carlsbad, but those are just the beach communities. You have all of these communities like San Marcos, these com com communities that are inland, you know, dozens and dozens of cities. The only way they have to go up north and south is on the five or, well, they got the 15 too. They can take the 15 and the five. But basically you've got all these people just piling onto the five. So it just was like, until I got to Oceanside, it started to thin out a little bit, but I think, or the 78. So, and that's actually where I was going. I was going to Oceanside. Um, but then I went down to Carlsbad, but cause I, I found a good, Alex found me a guitar on Craigslist, Craigslist. So we're going to, we got a little project we're going to do. I'll show it to you later. Um, and in fact, we, I should film that. We should, I should film that. Um, I'm going to text Alex. I can film that project and do it stages. I got the guitar. We should film the stages of it. Okay. Um, yeah, and then because coming back, Holly, I was checking the time. I was checking the. Um, oh, uh, where did you get your music? Um, I I did it for Emma. Did do I still have that? Uh, let me see if I let me let me do a search for landslide. Hmm. Yeah, and so he capos and uses C shapes. That's right. Uh, I can I'll drop the score to it. Okay. So here's the roadmap to it. I'll put it in the Discord. Okay, this is not what you think it is. Um, you gotta go back on to Discord. But I, it is the roadmap of the song with all the, you know, and it's it has the the open chord, like just read the names of the chords, and you should kind of be able to figure it out. Uh, where where am I here? And then okay. All right, um, so I just dragged it into Discord, so you have it there. But it's not the finger picking pattern. But the finger picking pattern, the reason I did it, I think, because it's pretty redundant, right? It's kind of, is it? He's kind of doing like a Travis thing, is that right? Like a slow Travis? get a copyright strike if I do too much more because Fleetwood Mac's really strict about songs um, like that so we'll see if I end up getting copyright. it's fine I don't need to monetize this video I don't make any I don't make any money on these videos the live streams I'm, I'm just doing it for for you guys and for me okay so um, and I got so much going on okay I should probably sign out for the second time this time intentionally uh, how many people do we have Oh, we kind of got back up there. I was worried that we're going to have like 10 people show up, but because I accidentally logged off the first time. But uh, yeah, so Bruce is, oh, so Holly, I was checking the, the time coming back. And like when I, when I got the guitar, the, I got it from this old guy and he, he wanted to talk a bit. And um, so I hung out with him and then I checked the time and I'm like, uh, it's going to take me three hours to get home. I'm like, uh. I had checked it the night before because I thought, oh, what time, how long does it take if there's zero traffic? So the night before at midnight, I checked and it was like an hour and a half from Granada Hills to Oceanside. And I'm like, okay. So <clears throat> I um, uh, went, um, um, the, 
I just kept checking and once it got under two hours, you know, I figured, okay, then I'll head up. But it was like three hours and I just went, no, uh, I'll go down to Carlsbad and see if my friends are there. And I just showed up and texted him. I said, hey, are you home? And I didn't want to ring the doorbell. I wanted, didn't want him to think I was a solar salesman. Uh, the cheat C chord. Um, okay, audio, hold on a second. Let me get, I'll get to that in a second. Um, what's your question for Wendy? What's Wendy's question? Okay, here comes the, here comes my bus. I'm just going on this video to me. So I won't, Tom doesn't usually up, re-upload the chat. No, the chat should always be up there. Um, did I say there was a cheat for the C chord? Or a chart for the C chord? I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, so Audio Murphy. Um, I, you know, one of... I, and I'm going to do a video on this also, um, but um, there's a book out there. Um, in fact, I think I'll, I'll find it on, on it's called Ju the, the Giuliani Studies. It's a classical guitar primer. Um, basically, every classical guitarist has this book, and, and it's 120 different finger picking patterns. And that sounds like a lot. And most, by far, most of them are completely unusable for most um, applications. A lot of the patterns are taken from one classical piece or another classical piece. The nice thing about the book is there's only two chords. It's G or C and G7. So, you know, it's like... The idea is you'd start out slow and do the fingering they tell you and then you start speeding it up and keep track but you don't speed it up like the same day you just like okay today I'm gonna play 80 beats per minute and then I'll maybe every week I'm gonna practice you know 10 different Giuliani arpe I mean uh, yeah Giuliani arpeggios and I think back when I got the book they only had it in music notation which was fine with me because I read music um, but I think they have it now with tab so let me let me see if I can find it on Amazon uh, where are you? Uh, Julie, honey. Uh, is it two L's? Julie. Julie. Yeah, there we go. Arpeggios. Uh, tap. With tab. Okay, so this one has tab. Let's see, can I... Do they do the C? Uh, no, they don't really... Uh, I don't know about this one. Let me see if I can find another one that I know. Oh, that's Kindle version. But you can find this... I don't think this one has tab, but you know, it's only two chords. So it's actually kind of a great way to, to learn how to read music. It's a very soft entry into reading music. And we've talked about it before. I think we've done videos before on that. Okay, sorry, uh, you guys are chatty, chatty, chatty. It takes a bit to chat up, get the link up. I think, uh, is Wendy looking for a scene? Uh, that's, you, you meant X3 to, um, C2 is X3203. C9, C9 would be X3233. Because C9 has a seventh in it. C2 doesn't have a seventh in it. Uh, but a bum bum. Oh, <laughs> Wendy, you're watching without hearing me. That's funny. She doesn't know what I'm saying. Okay, let's all talk about Wendy, you guys. <laughs> all right, so, yeah, so, um, yeah, so, like, the, I find that the, okay, so that that's just 
what to do. Okay, so working on right hand finger picking. So um, basically, what you're doing is you're assigning the bottom three strings to your thumb and the top three strings to your finger. So your first finger is going to be generally assigned to the, the third string, and then second finger assigned to the second string, and your third finger assigned to the third string. You don't really use your pinky much. I, I'll use my pinky in flamenco music. Pinky comes in handy for flamenco, but for everything else, I really don't use it much, except maybe as an anchor. Um, so the Giuliani arpeggios is a C chord, and then a G7 chord. And the G7 chord sometimes has a G in the bass, sometimes it's a, usually a B in the bass. Depends on the arrangement. Depends on the uh, the version of it, because Giuliani arpeggios are literally over 200 years old, so it's public domain. So anybody can publish it. We, you and I, could publish a book on this together if you wanted <laughs> so um but that g7 over b chord is kind of the second chord and basically so it's the 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 chords are um just the top five strings <coughs> yeah g7 over b so you so you got the c and then you go to here that's one five one five and so lots of That's one of them. Some of them are as simple as. Now, interestingly, I don't think there's anything resembling a Travis pattern. So that's the other pattern you'd want to get down is a Travis pattern. But but the Giuliani arpeggios will have a lot of the ones that were used by like, uh, you know, sunshine. You know, that one is, I think, is in, so it's a, and they'll move the thumb around, so it's a little bit interesting, almost like the melodies in the bass. And I'm using a classical kind of technique, although I'm not, I'm not sitting the proper way, but I'm, I'm using kind of an arched hand where my wrist, and it was funny because during my lessons, when I was studying in college, I had always done patterns like this, you know, like, right? Um, and my teacher was trying to get me to, so I, I spent most of my first year taking lessons from him, of him just grabbing my wrist and bending it back as I was doing this. Okay, now, what he did, and this is what I want to do a video on, is, um, uh, is he made me do these patterns, okay? Like I said, there's 120 of them. I don't think we ever got through all of them. And they, they're, I think they're groups of 10. So it's like, tw tw so you could, you know, try to get down the first 10, which are pretty simple ones, and then woodshed those for a while. And, but what he had me do was he had me accent a different finger. So for example, on, right? So I'm just thumb, first, second, third, thumb, first, second, third. I won't even go to the G chord. Well, then he said, okay, accent the thumb. Okay, well, that makes sense because it's a bass note. Okay, now accent the first finger. Wait, what? Yeah, no, make the, the note you play with your first finger stand out. And that's like, wait, that's hard. And it's really hard. And then he said, okay, now do the second finger. Whoops. Right? Well, there's a reason for that because when you're playing classical pieces, you know, uh, I don't know. Uh, whatever. Or. You don't really know where the melody is going to be, so you want to be able to have. Be, the melody could be in the middle, it could be on top, it could be in the bass. You never know where the melody is because if you listen to like. I love those score takedowns on YouTube 
where they have like Star Wars and um, uh, the Star Wars, um, they, then they have the, the chart, the score there highlighted where the melody is in like yellow and it goes like from the flutes to the, well, not, I don't think you ever use the flute, well, maybe double, but the strings, the trumpets, the, tr the French horns to the trombones or the basses, the cellos, everybody gets their turn playing the melody. And so that's kind of like when, you know, when I was playing earlier, the, like this track that this thing I wrote with, Ju you know, Justin Bieber and I have written a bunch of songs together. Um, and this never came out, but it was basically. But I, all those, all those years ago, my teacher made me do this exercise that I thought was completely pointless. And I'm realizing when I'm playing finger style, that I have this skill where I'm able to bring certain notes out louder than others. And that's where that came from. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to do a video on that where I go, okay, you can take now accent the first, now the second. And so you, now you've got these 120 patterns, but now you've got them to, to do them four new ways. So that's another 480 patterns. So now you're up to 600 patterns. Now, again, I've, I've never worked all the way through the Giuliani. I mean, I probably read them all, uh, but I've never actually played them all. But that's a really good um, place to learn a lot of finger picking patterns and get a lot of right hand skill. Very simply, without having a lot anything going on in the left hand, that's kind of key. You can even just practice your patterns with open strings. Um, one of the hardest finger picking patterns is from Villalobos. Um, is it Prelude Number One or Etude Number One? I can never remember. It's the one number one, but it's it's E minor chord. It starts with, but it doesn't stay there. But it's like this every other string thing. Very hard pattern. And then and this one maybe in the Giuliani. So then E minor over G. over G sharp. Oh good, Max. Then A minor. Then kind of a A minor A sharp diminished kind of thing. Not really, but and then I think it goes to E minor over B B to E, B7. And then it does this diminished chord on the middle four strings and then the two outside strings are open. So the fingering on this is open 11, 12, 10, 12, open. And then it just take that chord all the way down, literally, all the way to there. So what Villalobos was doing was he was using the guitar, using the idiosyncrasies of the guitar um, as a compositional tool. Because this is a sound that you couldn't do on any other instrument, really. You couldn't even do it on harp. And even though there's a lot of conflicting notes in there, Every one of them has beauty, beauty in it, and it's all centered around E because you got those E's on the outside. <laughs> Gary, that's a good one. 
I do not know about sitar. I really never even, I don't think I've ever played one. I have an electric sitar, which is not at all a sitar. It's just a guitar with a buzzy bridge. <laughs> so I wouldn't mind having an acoustic sitar, uh, acoustic. I have a, uh, a tempura. I don't have a vena. I have a, well, I'll make you very happy right now. I have a gobachon. And I have a, a tubi, a tubi. Audio Murphy, did I help you? Have you tried seven or eight or more string guitars? Um, yeah, I have a, an eight string, well, an eight course lute. It actually has 15 strings. I, I should have just gotten the six course lute, to be honest. Uh, the reason I got the eight course is because lute is typically tuned like a guitar up a third. I mean, they're slightly different, but but basically that's it. And I thought, oh, I might need that low E or, the, or maybe a D or something. But it just makes it, the the neck, it's like try to hard to, like an E chord doesn't feel like an E chord because you still have two more strings below the open E string or whatever. So um, a Vena, yeah, let me look up Vena. I've never heard of Vena instrument. Oh, I yeah, I know Venas. Um, I almost bought one of those. They're not giant. Um, and I found one somewhere. I think I saw one on uh, like on Reverb or something. Yeah, so it's kind of like a sitar, but kind of smaller, right? It's like a it's like a mini sitar. I'll have to do some more research on it. I'm I know at some point. Um, that looks like a wall hanger. That's a piece of art. That's not a real one. Um, Oh no, it's pretty big, unless she's really tiny. Um, I do have a tempura Schwarmendahl combo. They go together. Um, well, did you? <laughs> oh good, Chris, you like those. <laughs> that was for you. That was for you. So, uh, let me shut this, let's see. All right. Well, I I should get I should get to work. I <laughs> I could I could sit here and chat all day. Sitar's tuned to C, some tuned to C sharp. Okay. Yeah, that's one of the problems with sitar. I think you know because what if a composer comes along and goes, yeah, I got this sitar thing. I want you to do it's an it's an E flat. I'm like, I I can't really tune it. To, like my Schwarmendahl, I, I don't really have I don't know what I have it tuned to, but it, it's probably like some kind of D harmonic minor or something, you know, um, I've kind of gravitate towards a D. Um, cause I think if I look up, not Schwarmendahl. Yeah. Schwarmendahl. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm probably saying it wrong. I apologize. Um, um I, but I, if, correct me if I'm wrong. But oftentimes, and so my Schwarmendahl that I have is because it's got a tempura on it, the two together, it's, I think, 19 strings or something. It's not f a full-size one. Um, but if, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, but, like, oftentimes, like, at a Indian music concert or something like that, they, they'll have to take a break so everybody can tune to the new key or whatever. Is that true? Or do they bring up new instruments? Or do they just stay in the same key? Because... Like a Schwarmendahl, you know, it's like, you don't want to, it's, it's like 25 strings and it's tuned to a scale. Uh, same with the, the, the drone strings on a sitar. And I'm assuming that other one, the Vena thing, um, I'm assuming that that's also tuned, uh, you know, that the drone strings are tuned to certain pitches. So you, you need to kind of change those. So, um, oh, the underlying strings are tuned chromatically. So, okay. So they ring sympathetically. So they have them all. Okay. And you play with a special pick. Thank you, Gary. Melody string and other string tuned to, yeah. So and it almost sounds like, I, you know, I would love to get a, a hurdy-gurdy. It's kind of like a hurdy-gurdy thing because hurdy-gurdies have <coughs> drones as well. And uh, 
I've been threatening to get one, but the problem is the one I want to get is like twenty five, thirty five hundred bucks, and <laughs> I don't just have thirty five hundred dollars lying around. They take a break to tune. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That makes it's just funny. It's like whoa, that's like serious, and that's why those concerts are so long. It's I, I and Chris, don't take this wrong, but my only regret I have very few regrets in life, but one of them is. Uh, it, when we, I managed a building and, you know, we lived in an apartment building in Pasadena for 32 years and I managed it for 25 years, uh, until we finally bought a house. It's a miracle to buy a house in Los Angeles, but anyway, we did it. Um, and I'll be darned if, if, uh, my neighbor who was a ma managed this, the, um, auditorium at the Pasadena city college every year they had a, an Indian music festival. And he said, hey, you should come and hang out there because every year George Harrison comes and hangs out and does some music and hangs out backstage because Rabbi Shankar is there. Or it's his thing. And I go, oh, I don't know. I don't like I'll maybe next year. I don't really I'm not a big fan of Indian music. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, and every year he, he'd ask me, oh, are you going to come to this year? And I go, oh, yeah, I'm busy. You know, I got I got something to do or whatever. And uh and then George Harrison died, and I, I never got a chance to meet him. I'm so bummed. My, my, uh, Sheila and her husband, my, the sax player at my church, um, she and her husband just met uh, Ringo Starr the other day. Um, at um, She plays um, sax with, and keyboards with um, the lead singer um, for Men at Work, Who Can It Be Now? She tours with him. And, um, and then he's in Ringo Starr's band. And so um, he tours with Ringo Starr. And so he turned 70 and Ringo showed up at the birthday party and Sheila was there. Um, and that was funny. So she got, she got to joke around with Ringo. I was telling her, you know, like Ringo's one of those people and Justin's the same way, you know, but um, Justin Bieber, but because um, I work with him sometimes. And not, I haven't seen him in a while though, but... Um, he, uh, but the, they have the, the you know, very unique power, and Bill Murray uses this power, but they have the very unique power to give people memories that they'll talk about the rest of their lives. Uh, and most of us can't do that, right? <laughs> most of us, you know, we're not like, I, I go talk to someone and it's like five years later and I was like, you know, I had this conversation with Tom Straley, you know, they're never going to say that. But Colin, hey, thank you, Gary. So yeah, Sheila tours with Colin, and Colin turned seventy the other day, and they were having a part. They were having a party at a restaurant in Santa Monica, and Ringo and Barbara Bach showed up, and so, um, and she and and Ringo was was and Sheila were joking around because Sheila's first husband was a drummer, and she's always like playing in bands with two drummers and things like that. So um, it, it's funny. She's like, I've always got a lot of drummers around. Yeah, I yeah I have a Puerto Rican cuatro. Uh, that's right here. in tune um, the tuning on this is B E A D G so it's tuned in fourths oh shoot it got out blurry come on focus back here we go you can do it ah, sorry about that Think about it, it's a pretty symmetrical. I know it won't go back to focus. Come on, you can do it. Sometimes it does that when I walk away. Let me, let me walk away again and come back and see the. Come on. Sometimes I just got to go like that and then, uh, come on. Well, on this note, I was going to sign out anyway. <laughs> I'm, what are you talking about? I'm not blurry. <laughs>
Uh, we toss it. Start playing zither like a guitar. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Now it's back. All right, so I don't have, oh shoot, that's gonna do it again. I don't have a zither, but I do have this. Um, I guess I could say I have a zither. I forgot, I, got, I think, did I put hammer gold on it? Um, so I, I bought this for like 50 bucks. Oh, it went blurry again, sorry. Um, I bought this for like 50 bucks. And um, it, didn't, it didn't have the buttons. Like, it was missing the buttons. So I saw this thing on Instagram, because I get the, sometimes I'll get these ads for weird instruments on Instagram. Um, and it was these giant boxes with all the strings tuned to the same note, except maybe a couple down low, like a pentaton, like a D minor pentatonic kind of thing. But everything else was just like the same note. And what you do, you know, it was a table that someone lays on, and you play it, and it's supposed to, like, center their spirit or something like that. So I thought, oh, that's pretty cool. So, no, it's not tuned now. But these are all Gs, I think. Close, supposed to be Gs. But it sounds pretty. You know, I had them all tuned to G, but I actually like it all out of tune. Speaking of weird stuff, I'm gonna have I'm gonna go back. Uh, I gotta I gotta get back to I gotta get back to my duties, my jobs. But I will <clears throat> uh, hopefully be here next Monday. <laughs> Lord willing, I'll be up at, in time. Um, yes, I, I I remember that episode of um, uh, Star Trek. I remember like years later after seeing that episode as a kid, probably in the 70s, as on a rerun. I was at an Alan Holdsworth concert in 1983 or four in Phoenix, actually in Tempe, and I'm watching him play, and the music sonically, I went, "Wow, this is so." Spock was right; the you know, Star Trek was right. This is the music of the future. It was like it sounded very futuristic. It was crazy. So, oh, thank you, thank you, Chris. Oh, the you talking about the. The auto harp. Yeah, I actually, those are all new strings too. That's the, I did restring it. So I did, bought a whole new set of strings and promptly broke a couple and had to buy more. Crazy. Almost 120 the subs. Oh, really? Well, that's awesome, Bruce. I didn't notice. Well, it's going to go up. <laughs> it's definitely going to go up. <coughs> um, Paul, Paul Davids reached out and said he's starting to edit the video, the interview he did with me. So when that post, I'll probably get a few thousand more subscribers. I'm not, don't think it's going to double my channel, but I do have that. Uh, I'll, I'll go, I got to go to discord. That's the other thing I can do is I got to go to discord and see the comments you made. So right now the up on discord, one of the advantages of joining the discord group is you can see sometimes videos before I post them because I like to get feedback in case there's something I can fix. Like if I did a typo or whatever, if I say something wrong, I can't really fix it. I could edit it out maybe, but um, I can't, I'm not going to go back and shoot the video again. Uh, so in that video it took forever to edit because you, you'll see it's got it's a it's a half an hour which if you do watch it and even if you watch all of it and it's basically mandolin for guitar players so it's beginner mandolin stuff which is kind of fun uh, but if you can get through it um, then uh, uh, yeah that you're you're a superstar so I'm not expecting you to watch the whole thing but if you just happen to see something off offside um, yeah. Yeah, that is definitely, that's kind of why I have that Gary, that's tune, out of tune like that is to create this kind of thing. Because the cool thing is I can just hit that, and even though it's in G, you can shift the, you know, you can modulate it to be in any key if you want. And it sounds really cool if you knock it down an octave or something. It's like, what the heck is that? So, Charlie B, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chris. Um, hope you don't mind me calling you Chris, Chris instead of Krishnu. Krishnu, Chuck. 
Chato Padaheye. Man, you're going to stick you forever. <laughs> I hope if you get famous and you have to sign your autograph, oh my gosh, dude, that would just be like a pain. That's a lot. That's a big name. <laughs> I guess you just go KC, right? So, okay. Uh, yeah, you can send me an alarm clock. I did not set the alarm. I have an alarm clock. I don't usually sleep past seven or eight. So I was, I did, but I, did, I totally forgot today was Monday. Yesterday didn't feel like a Sunday because I played one service at church and then I have an hour break. So I came home and did a session and went back to church. And then, and then I drove down to San or down to, yeah, basically San Diego and then had dinner with friends and it just was like this long thing. So I will, um, okay. Talk to you later. Thank you so much for watching and God bless you all. Bye-bye.